Welcome to Identified. My father has like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, <laughs> and then he just, it's like as if he's going to go up and smoke. So he just comes in and he'll have his guitar. He talks about what he loves, like literally like, it's like they were like time traveled from the 60s. They're still like that. <laughs> and he's very amusing, very funny. And But after like 20 minutes, he has to go you know, and he can't tolerate. That's it. But yeah. he is not good with interpersonal relationships with anybody. So it's hmm. not personal. He oh, just, interesting. You've you know, seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see his career also that he could have maintained it. And I feel like he's a very sensitive and he probably could have, if he had thicker skin, I, you have to have relationships with people in the business. Right. And I feel like he wanted to only do it his way and maybe get his feelings hurt or who yeah. knows. Yeah. He's made his life the way he likes it. Hello, I'm Nabil Ayers, author, music executive, and host of Identified, the podcast that delves deep into the complex world of family and identity. In this episode, my guest is Ioni Skye, who I first met at a music festival in 2023. I grew up watching Ioni on screen in such films as River's Edge, Say Anything, and Wayne's World, and I was thrilled when she agreed to be a guest on the podcast. What I didn't know until recently was that we had a lot in common. We were both raised primarily by our mothers, and we grew up without knowing our famous musician fathers. As I learned in my conversation, that's not all we had in common. Ioni talks about first meeting her father, the musician Donovan, later in life, and seeing his exact facial expressions and mannerisms in herself. It's a feeling she described as, like looking into a mirror, something I've experienced in my own life. We also both call our mothers by their first names, rather than mom. Stay tuned to hear how Ioni's definition of family has expanded as she's grown older and how mixed emotions come to the surface when navigating complex family relationships. All that coming up in my conversation with Ioni. How did your mother and father meet? Do you know? Yeah, the they backstory? met at the Roxy. My mom was working at the Roxy. She's in New York, but she mm. came out with her older sister to LA. She grew up in Queens and Brooklyn. Jewish New Yorker, but just culturally, but she's very beautiful. And she went to Paris and modeled for a year, but she just didn't really like it. And she ended up meeting like fabulous, fun people and just having a good time yeah. in the early 60s. Amazing. And then she came to LA and loved it. And she dated Jim Morrison for like three months. They lived together. Oh, wow. But I was like, what was, what were you doing then? And she was like, yeah, we were taking acid and living together. This was before he was super famous. Okay. And I was like, and he was very bright apparently. And I was like, that must have been kind of fascinating. And it's interesting because she's more of a controlled person. Like she's sort of the idea of her doing acid is funny in a way. Right. But she, so she was in the scene. She just threw my aunt who was very, my aunt was in John Cassavetti's first movie. Oh, wow. And she just had all, my aunt was sort of the gateway for my mom to meet a lot of groovy people. And she's totally cool, my mom. And my grandfather was a cab driver. They were, you know, they, she didn't have like, it was more like just get married and have kids. They right. didn't push her to do, have a career or anything. Mm -hmm. So she just hung out, but she was working at the whiskey and hanging out and had all these friends. And she actually left Jim Morrison for my father because wow. he, she just loved him. And they moved to England and lived like in a gypsy caravan on the Isle of Skye in oh, wow. Scotland. And right. so they had my brother and my mother was like never happier. Like she loved my father. You know, he was at the time, Donovan, his career was, was biggest when he was really young, mm -hmm. like when she was sort of with him. But he had been dating before my mom, Linda Leach, who had had a kid with Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones. Oh, okay. And Brian Jones and she had a kid and then Brian Jones died. My father was just like not as in love with my mom as she was. Like mm. she just really wanted to get married and she just like went crazy for him. And then they broke up, got back together. But then she got pregnant with me and it was like not a good phase in their relationship. But mm -hmm. he was like, have the baby. I'll support you. I'll be your friend. I don't know. And then he got back together with Linda, who he'd been with before Brian Jones. He's still with her. They're still oh, married. Wow. Yeah. So his big love is Linda, my stepmother. And my mom, so he left my mom and she actually went to London in a flat with some friends with me and my brother but he just wasn't like 
keen to like, he didn't really do anything. He just sort of married Linda actually like right away. He just wasn't in contact at all. My mom is like in London, like, what am I going to do? So she, he actually said like, why don't you just go back to the States? She had to like get a lawyer and try to get child support. He just like had two daughters, lived in England forever. And weirdly, he lived in Joshua Tree, which Mm -hmm. is like three hours from here. Yeah, not far. Most of my childhood, I didn't even know, you know. Wow. But I grew up, I hung out with my Scottish grandparents on his side. He's Scottish. Mm -hmm. I knew I had half sisters. My mom was still, she sort of still never got over the whole thing. He never wrote or called. He gave child support, but he just never was involved. And my brother once saw him at a concert. Somebody said, oh, that he's playing and I'm going. And they were like, do you want to go? And I was like six or seven. And I had a lot of pride. I like did not, I was like, I don't want to go somewhere where someone doesn't want me. So I didn't do it. But then my brother started really hanging out with him when he was like a teenager. And finally, when I was around 17, he was like, he'd started seeing my father. And then they were kind of having fun, like, smoking pot and whatever, doing things together. (laughs) And I just thought, okay, I should just meet him. So I met him and his wife and my half sisters. And, you know, and then the story goes on from there. But I did find out when I was like 16 that he wanted my mom to have a blood test to see if I was his. And I was like, what the, you know. That's not not an uncommon thread in the the many sort of kids of musicians that I've talked to in and the I don't last know couple if it was years. Yeah. I started working or my brother turned 18 and maybe he was just like, oh, I'm no longer have to pay for the boy. Right. But now I'm still paying for the girl, but she's acting and, you know, I started having right, that, a career. And so that is maybe, interesting. It's like so close to when I assume it would stop at 18 probably. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I still don't know what I'm guessing it was because Maybe he thought, oh, she's working, and I don't even know. But Hmm. I didn't want to do the test. And I was a little bit like asking my mom, like, why? She told me because she wanted to just, she was sort of mad that he, she wanted me to prove, like, yes, you are his. Right, right. But then I said to her, because I'm writing my memoir right now. So I said to her recently, like, well, you know, I don't like giving her a hard time. You know, we're both getting older, whatever. She's great. And so... I was like, well, didn't you think like that would upset me? And she she just didn't really comprehend that. But I sort of thought, why even bring it up? Because it wasn't really about the money, I don't think. Right. But I think she just, I can imagine being so annoyed. But I look a lot. I am his daughter, I know. Was there any part of you that thought, what if I'm not actually? Yeah, for sure. And then I was friends with the Zappas, like Frank Zappa's family. And I remember Gail Zappa, Frank's wife, was like, he looks so much like him. Oh my God. And then I was sort of, I mean, now, like, I mean, I there's no question. Right. We look so much alike. I mean, now that we're talking, I'm like, hey, maybe I'm not. <laughs> no, but I mean, I've, I've, uh, I'm, yeah, we're, yeah, we're kind of spitting image. And, and also my half sisters, it's like, we're so, we look so much alike. Yeah. So, but we have a very funny, like when I see them, he lives in Ireland and Mallorca, which I've never been to that place. But I just imagine I'm visiting like kooky relatives, you know, I don't see them that much, but it's sort of almost easier to, I'm sure you have that separate, where's the parent you grew up with, you right. know, so much baggage and good and bad, but with someone that I am still having a you know, new relationship with, it's almost easy to, the funny thing is similar to your story. It's not like in the movies where you meet and then it's all of a sudden like, oh my God, where right, have you right. been? Yeah. It's like, he's still hurt my feelings many times. Right. He's just a piece of work, but he's, I appreciate him and it's easier to have, I'm sure you might have this like an objective thing about it. Because, yeah, to, to at least accept what it is, maybe yeah. not agree, but to at least know like, right. but at this point in time, it's probably not going to change. So right. I'll take what I can from this. And yeah. That, and well, that's what it is. Yeah. And just kind of look at it more from afar and uh, try not to get upset if he's still being whatever. He's just an interesting personality. But yeah. yeah. You said something interesting earlier, which was something to the effect of why would I want to meet someone who doesn't want to meet me? Yeah. And you thought that when you were six or seven years old. Yeah, I guess I had like a lot of pride even at that age. But you already understood the the sort of 
I mean, s- some details of the story, right? I, yeah, my mom was always very like I knew about my half sisters. Yeah. They didn't know about us, which sort of shows you how much more my mom was like more of a kind of right, right. You know, normal. Like my half sisters saw pictures of us when we visited our mutual grandparents, and we're like, "Who are these?" kids and my grandma's like that's your brother and sister you know whatever wow scottish accent yeah and they were like 13 and 14 and then they didn't talk to my father and their mom for like they said like a month because they were just like why didn't you tell us you we have right but we i always knew so i had a similar thing when i was maybe a little older probably seven or eight or nine but the difference so i, I still don't know my father i've met him a couple of times once really but when i was a kid you know my mother got pregnant with his consent on purpose. She wanted to be a young single mother. She knew he wasn't oh, going right. to be part of our lives. It was basically planned that he wouldn't be. So I never grew up with any like, you're deadbeat dad, or why doesn't he send us money? Anytime he was ever talked about, it, it was really positive. It right. was like, he was this charming, charismatic guy who gave us you. Like, that's the kind of things I heard about him. Not yeah. often, but if I did, it was always positive. So yeah. I didn't have this negative thing, but I still had, I think I still just understood that But if he wanted to, he could easily come say hi or do something. And so we were at a concert once. And this is something, I don't totally remember this, but this is more when I was writing my book, I talked to my mother about it and asked her a lot of questions, as I'm sure you are. And she remembers this one night when we went to see him play in New York and maybe talked to him for like a really short minute. But I think just felt kind of like, it always felt like this when I was a kid, like he kind of rushed through the room was like, hey, hey, how's it going? I got to go. Yeah. Like that. It was getting late and I was tired. And he hadn't played yet. And she said, I said, let's go home. And she said, don't you want to stick around and see he's playing? And I said, he didn't have time for me. So why should I make time for him or something like that? Which again, for like a seven or eight year old to even hearing positive things about him to understand that or to feel that is pretty powerful. Yeah, I know. It's so interesting to think how it affects you in your life. And even my brother being a boy and I don't know, just all the ways it affects you when you don't have your father figure. It's so, cause the mother is like so vital. Right. And I feel like that really is more damaging. I suppose if you have a really hard abandonment with a mother, but the father is something too, you know, Yeah. obviously, but yeah, I think I sort of grew up like, Meh, maybe I don't really need a right, dad course, or whatever, yeah. but I did have that pride. Like, yeah, It's interesting that at a young age, I didn't think consciously I have pride, but I just knew that I I didn't want to see him. Yeah. And you probably knew that he hurt your mother. Yeah. Whether she told you that or whether you just felt it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. She was cool. And once we got older, but that's also the weird thing is when I do see him, I find, and I don't see him that much, but I find I have to kind of demonize my mother in my mind. And then when I'm back with my mom, I sort of... Well, I'm like, oh, this guy was such a jerk or whatever. It's sort of, it is, I'm sure kids do that with, wow. you know, divorced parents too. It's sort of hard to own that they both right. had issues. I mean, I would say my father, he didn't show up the way, I mean, my mom is an amazing person. So, yeah. But yeah, it's interesting. Wow. Was there ever a point growing up where, and maybe it was when you met him, but before that, where your definition of family changed for any reason, where maybe when you knew about him, when you knew about your new half sisters, or did any of those things change sort of like the concept of what family meant to you? Well, I had a few stepfathers. So I think it felt very cozy with my mother and my brother, mm. the three of us. And then I was very close to my grandparents. Mm-hmm my mom's parents. And so I had a real sense of family right. with my mom's side. And then the stepfathers always felt like this other person coming in, you know, and so that kind of almost highlights, like without the stepfathers, it would just sort of feel like, oh, my mom and all our friends. And she had a very, we had a very vibrant home that just so many people, she was always cooking dinner and we had just so many great friends around all the time. Right. And it felt kind of cozy. And so I guess with the stepbrothers coming in, that would sort of highlight that, I guess I don't, where's my dad, my real dad? And who's this other person coming into our scene? And he said a few. Yeah. Two when I was little. And then I've had the same one since I was like 15. Right. Did either of the two that are gone feel like family members or did they at any time or did it kind of feel like, oh, they won't last that long? 
I mean, the second one kind of started. Yeah, yeah, the second one did, but they both had, you know, it was both kind of complicated in their own ways. Yeah. So yeah, not like Exactly. It always felt, also it always felt like my mom never could let herself truly be in love again. Mm. So she was just doing it. Well, the first one sort of to help support the family. Right. And then the second one was, he really just fell for her, like, and just wore her down. And he was, you know, just <laughs> oh, like, and finally she was, and we were like, we, we liked him. He was younger and he had a Jeep and the first Walkman, you know, we oh, were wow. like, thir- you know, we were <laughs> like 10 and, dude. yeah, 13. <laughs> right. like, He's cool, you know. So we sort of just made, not made her, but, but yeah, the first one was purely, she had two babies and like no money and he was, had some money and he was, you know, but like drug smuggler money, but which wow. is like very, he was all right considering it was like, could have gone way worse. Yeah. And he was loving in his own way, but my mom does not like talking about that yeah. chapter. She Are you like, still in touch with any of the, the your mom's exes? No, no, that was like, once they were out, right. I was like, good. We were all sort of happy to never, Yeah, it wasn't yeah. terrible, but it wasn't like, yeah, again, holding them up to like, we have such a nice group of friends and mm-hmm. close family and my mother, create. she really created such a great thing. But yeah, thinking about it, she's not great at picking men. <laughs> My stepfather now is very solid and he's been great, but she definitely, yeah, she didn't pick like, I don't know, like people that really fit in perfectly right, right. or whatever, you know. Was there ever a point when sort of your definition of family changed? Any, anything that happened in your life? For me, the moment I think about this a lot now that I've been talking about it, but when I was 10. Before I was 10, my mother and I lived in Amherst and New York in these very liberal, very truly diverse mixed race communities, tons of single mothers, lots of kids of different races, tons of kids with no money, almost everybody. And then we moved to Salt Lake City for my mother's job, which was suddenly proper families to everyone in a house with two parents who loved each other and Right. Two or three or four or five kids. It was right. really like a TV show. And it was yeah. like, oh, everyone here is like this. This is this totally change it. This is like the TV version of family, except right. now we're the weird ones and yeah. everybody else is this. And it really just shifted in my head like what family was. It made us feel made me feel very much like an outsider. Like yeah. I thought we had this incredible thing. And I was right. But seeing that just really felt like, oh weird. I feel totally left out and like there's this thing with all these people and it's so safe and so nurturing. And it really kind of changed things. But did you, did you ever have anything that... Well, yeah. Like you, my most of my mom's friends were single mothers who had mm. the same situation, pretty much like, you know, a musician. But they the moms, it was interesting, didn't seem as like wounded as my mother. Like, I don't know. They just sort of... My mom seemed to really be so sad about my dad and yeah. they seemed to just be like going on with their life. But yeah, I also had... I mean, my elementary school, I think it was more just... I grew up here. For me, it was more of a mix of the single moms. And then there was, it was always when I would go to someone's house and see the dad. It was, that was weird. Like my friend up the street calling her father Dada or whatever. It was always so weird to hear a kid calling someone dad or Mm. daddy. Mm -hmm. And like, I would just watch them sit on their dad's lap or do whatever. And that would highlight it. I think when I was a parent going to schools, my first kid and her her father, we weren't together, but now I've been in a really good marriage for mm-hmm. a while. But I think when you go to s- take your kids to school, there are a lot of families together, depending yeah. on the school. Right. So maybe that also, yeah, I sort of again was like, oh, I'm the single mom with the kid. Right. And I really had a crazy repeat where we broke up like while I was pregnant oh. and I was crying in the shower one day and I thought, wow, this is crazy. My mom was pregnant with me, probably crying in a shower. I was like, whoa, I repeated a pattern. Wow. But that was a unique situation where we were like put together, this, my first child's father between Mm. good friends. And it just was like, we both were like, let's get married and have a kid. And it just didn't work. (laughs) Now having being in a nice, it is a trip for me to see my husband parenting our daughter mm-hmm. and he parents both of them. So, I mean, she's got two, you know, dads now because she's close to both. But with our kid, it's, I don't know if it's like, I guess it's like very healing and 
He's such a good dad. Yeah, like I'm sure you I are. I would imagine. Oh, I don't have kids. <laughs> oh, you don't? No. I thought you did. <laughs> no, but maybe um, someday. Oh, I thought you did for no. some reason when I pictured your house. But yeah, seeing him parent is really nice. Yeah, I would imagine he's amazing. Yeah, he's yeah. really good. And so I think that's really just nice for me to see. And that does sort of, seeing him do it so well. Right, right. I just think... Hey, couldn't you have done that? But right. my father sounds like yours. My father has like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, <laughs> and then he just, it's like as if he's going to go up and smoke. So he just <laughs> comes in and have his guitar. He talks about what he loves, like literally like it's like they were like time traveled from the 60s. They're still like that. <laughs> and he's very amusing, very funny. And But after like 20 minutes, he has to go. That's his, right. you know, and he can't tolerate. That's it. But yeah. he is not good with interpersonal relationships with anybody. So it's hmm. not personal. He oh, just, interesting. You've you know, seen it. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. I mean, I see his career also that he could have maintained it. And I feel like he's a very sensitive and he probably could have, if he had thicker skin, I, you have to have relationships with people in the right. business. And I feel like he wanted to only do it his way. And, you know, he, I don't think he could... You know, I don't know. He he would just maybe get his feelings hurt or who yeah, knows. Yeah. He's made his life the way he likes it. Right. And so I think that he just doesn't have the ability to like of intimacy. Yeah, it's a capacity thing. I mean, yeah. I think it's it's common in musicians or entertainers, I think, too, which is Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. It's interesting about um you saying you watching people call their father dada or whatever. Yeah. I, so I've never called my mother I've only called my mother Louise her oh, name wow. oh, from the youngest I can remember. I yeah. never called her mom. I would say my mom or my mother right. if I were talking to you about her, but never addressed her by that right. name. I always assumed, and lots of people have asked me about it, I always assumed it was because I didn't have a father there to say, go tell your mother or whatever. Because oh, I always saw my right. friends who had both parents, the other parent refer to them as your mother or your father or yes. something like that. But, yeah, I think you're right. You have to have the kid. Having said that about my kid, she calls Ben, Ben a lot, hmm. but it's because I don't say, ask your father. I always say like, ask Ben or, and I refer to him as Ben. So I, it just would feel huh. weird to me. Like, go ask your dad. Like, I don't know. It seems like weird, like to, it, cause I, he's Ben to me. I'm right. like, you know, so I do think that is something like, if you only hear everyone referring to somebody as right. Ben, you know, she, now she, she actually does call him Ben, <laughs> but it's cause I've, and then I feel bad and I'm like, but she calls I, you mom. Yeah. yeah. But maybe because Ben would say, call me mama. He didn't say, ask Ioni. Right, right. He would say, ask mama. And so they call me mama. Huh. So I think that's what makes kids do it. Yeah. And I ruined it for him. <laughs> 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 it's like, daddy. It just seems <laughs> weird. Like, right. come over here, dad. Like, I don't know. Like, your dad. I should have done that more. It's not too late. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Change it tonight. That's true. Are there, I'm curious that both as a mother and as a daughter, are there traditions, any family traditions or sort of things, rituals that you grew up with that you're passing on to your child or that you're not either way, I guess? We do Christmas and Easter and Ben grew up more religiously Jewish, but he's not into it. But sometimes we'll have Passover and Hanukkah you know, Halloween, we love, like, we were having haunted house in the house. But yeah, and as a kid, it was funny, my mom had Christmas, and my grandparents were not into it. It's the exact same for me, Jewish you know? grandparents, and Jewish mother, like, yeah. always Christmas, though. Yeah, I know. And I asked her, I was like, why? I don't know if it was because she and my father had Christmas, but mm. she didn't feel, but they were maybe like your, I don't know, like your grandparents, I don't know. My grandfather was, he grew up Orthodox and he was so turned off to it. And then they were like communist, socialisty. He was way more political and he just, he found religion offensive mm -hmm. and, you know, so he really been turned off. But culturally, he still felt Jewish, but he was not into religion in general. Right. And my grandmother was more or less like mainstream, just cultural stuff. But yeah, I don't know why... I know they didn't love seeing a Christmas tree, but <laughs> right. they were very close. You know, it was fine. But ki Christmas trees are so fun. Yeah, there's something about it. Christmas definitely just wins in terms of I like know. <laughs> whatever the showiness of it all uh, in yeah. America. It's yeah. so cozy and yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we do that. And I don't know, we don't have any other. Yeah, it's just very normal, like whatever birthday. Right, right. And, you know, and my mom always has Thanksgiving and 
it's her thing. But um, we fight over who gets it sometimes. But I always, I'm letting <laughs> right. her win because it's also a headache to make Thanksgiving. Of course, yeah. My, my wife's parents are divorced, and that that becomes a thing every year. Like who, which place? Yeah. yeah, I know. Now every year we get invited to a really fun Thanksgiving. Oh. With friends, and it's always like <laughs> rushing off from that one to go to my mother's one, right. and, and always praying like they're not at the same time, but then often they are, and it's like it's just annoying because yeah. I want to go to the. I mean, ours I'll go are to the fun. fun one. Yeah. yeah, they're really fun, but ours usually turn into. My mom loves musicians, mm -hmm. and I obviously love. I mean, I'm always I've only dated musicians, but I don't play music. But she loves when then it turns into a jam right. or whatever the musicians in the family's kind of resented. I don't know if you have that at all. Like where people are like, do you like, like not perform for me, but right. like she just wants bring out the guitars. And sometimes like my brother and Ben, my husband mm -hmm. are like not in the mood, but then really? she, it finally will happen. And right. Yeah. That's funny. I mean, I mean, more of the musicians are on my father's side, so I haven't had holidays with them, but, but even on my side, I mean, there are some musicians on my mom's side. I can remember more as a kid, people saying like, play something for us. I was a drummer too, which is not right. the best like solo instrument at a <laughs> Thanksgiving party right. or like playing. But, but I just <laughs> remember could. feeling, always feeling really self-conscious about it and thinking, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want, like that's different. And even anytime when I, when I was in college, I play guitar too. And someone would be like, Oh, play us a song. Like yeah. I never wanted to do that. I love yeah. playing in bands and performing, but that was yeah. different than like sure. doing it in that setting. And it, some of it did feel a bit like kind of dance monkey dance, I think. Like, yeah. You know, What does family mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I do love the family, the blood family and the friend family thing. I like, I think that it's so nice if you can have both. And I have been really lucky to, I do really love my mom and I'm and my brother. I mean, my brother and I have gone through different chapters in our lives. But I do think that there's something specific about the feeling of family, but yeah, now my friend family is growing and getting close again in a different way with new kinds of friends. So that does feel a lot like family. Yeah, it's such a trip to have kids because it's like, I always knew I wanted kids and then I almost did it unconsciously in a way. Mm. And then when you have them, it's like the hardest thing in the world. And then, so I don't know, I'm still processing almost I had these kids, like, it's such a trip. And the responsibility is so intense. So from the parent point of view, it's like, it's, I don't know if I'll ever really understand, like, I'm just like, I want to keep them alive when they're little. And now it's like, it's incredible to parent together with Ben. But I guess, yeah, it is so unique, isn't it, family? Um, I mean, what it means to me, I don't know, I guess, because I have a nice I do have a really incredible mother and she lives around the corner. Oh, wow. That's so great. I'm, I'm, it just, if it's really incredible, but it is funny to, I, I imagine when you don't have a, like with my brother and the times that it hasn't been so great, mm -hmm. it does feel more confusing and like, I need to keep up with this or do I, or, you know, all of right. that. Right. Or is there effort? Yeah. Yeah. But definitely there's different lessons you learn with family members. Right. But there is something fascinating with, family youth, like some cousins that I don't see, but then I will, I just, before I see them, I think, what is this? Who cares with cousins? And then sometimes you're around them, you're like, I don't know if I'm imagining, but I am feeling something. Right. But is that imagined or is it because you are related or what is, is related even mean anything? Right. That's the thing like, whoa, we both like vanilla ice cream. We right. must be related. Or are yeah. you just thinking that because you're yeah. looking for something like that? I think that kind of thing happens a lot. Yeah. Like you want it to feel like something. Yeah. I mean, I met a half brother, my father's son, who was maybe two or four years younger than me, pretty close in age. And it was just interesting, really nice guy, but interesting how little we connected yeah. to me. It really just felt like this is a person I'm getting information from. Exactly. We have nothing in common. Yeah. He yeah, doesn't, doesn't play my... music, which I thought was fascinating. Right. Like he's into sports, which I'm not like, there were so many things that were just like, Oh, weird. Yeah. That you got the, the music thing. That is right. interesting. The genetic, Yeah. even right. the facial, ex like I didn't grow up with my father whatsoever. And my brother didn't, but sometimes I'll hang out with my father and He'll do an expression. Yes. That's wild. That's the thing. Because you don't, it's like, what the is that? exact thing happened to me. With the really? One time I had lunch with my father when I was 
35 or so. I sat across from him at a table at a sushi restaurant. We'd met, you know, briefly several times when I was a child, but it'd probably been at least 20 years since I'd seen him. And he just like, the way he laughed, certain just like, even like yeah. actual movements and mannerisms. It yeah. was so wild to see. It was like looking into a mirror. I yeah. couldn't believe it. And yeah. it was really like, this actually is a genetic thing. That's yeah. the only way yeah. this exists. Yeah. It's, a, it's so wild. Yeah. And it does kind of feel like lately I've been thinking, it's not exactly like being adopted, but hmm. it's sort of interesting meeting if you didn't grow up with right. your father at all, like for, for us, and then you meet them. It is sort of like, it's, you know, it's not like you were put up for a dog, but it is sort of interesting. It's like meeting your biological parent. It's, it, yeah, it's, because I would, yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. But yeah, the genetic thing is interesting. And I guess, I, yeah, I'm very poetic and, I draw, he draws, I don't know, all that stuff. It's yeah. Wow. Thanks for tuning in. Please consider subscribing to Identified wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss an episode. And be sure to check out Identified on YouTube and identifiedpod.com where you can watch videos from our interviews. Our executive producer is Kieran Banerjee, and the show is produced by Palm Tree Island. The music for Identified is by Noella and Patricia Brennan. I'm Nabil Ayers. Thanks for tuning in.